The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the COP23 webinar taking place today on 22nd June 2017. My name is Chi San Huang, Senior Climate Advocacy Officer at ECLEI World Secretariat. I will be the facilitator of today's webinar. Once again, I would like to welcome you all to today's webinar. Before we start, I would like to give you a quick uh, introduction on the technical aspect of today's webinar. First of all, automatically you are all muted, and I would like to ask you to stay muted throughout the presentations that we prepared for you today for a smooth proceeding. Second, if you have any questions, you have an opportunity to write your questions in the question box within your task pane. And last but not least, this webinar is being recorded, and uh, this, the link to the recording of this webinar will be shared with you in due course. Now with that, I would like to introduce today's panelists. First of all, let me introduce Mr. Yunus Arikan. He is the Head of Global Policy and Advocacy at ICLE World Secretariat. He is also the Local Governments and Municipal Authorities Constituency Focal Point to the UNFCCC. Also, I would like to introduce Ms. Suzanne Nolden. She is from the city of Bonn. She is a city government official working in the areas of international affairs and global sustainability. Now, with that introduction, I would like to give the floor to Yunus. Yunus, now the floor is yours. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all joining us in this webinar. Uh, we had a morning round uh, in, in German time uh, a couple of hours ago, and it's a great pleasure to welcome you all in the um, Western Hemisphere. Uh, I also would like to recall uh, Ms. Lena Fursch from the City of Bonn, Deputy Head of the International Relations Department, joining us. Uh, so in today's webinar, um, we will go through the progress we have achieved since our last uh, webinar on the 24th of April. We will have a brief overview of the outcomes of the UNFCC sessions in Bonn last month. Uh, we will go through the latest uh, preparations for the COP23 agenda. And we will have uh, more detailed discussions on the, the Leaders' Summit on the 12th of November. Afterwards, we will uh, also uh, take you through the, the next steps in, on the way to COP23 in terms of our preparations. Uh, and then we will go through the list of events and certain deadlines in the next couple of months until COP uh, in November in Bonn, Germany. Um, so uh, the last two months were particularly excited and full of a number of global events. Um, these are a list of events that we have captured. There are maybe some of them missing, but we think it's, it gives, reflects most of the, uh, the activities that we have been going through. So uh, we have started the, the month of May with the Resident Cities Congress in, uh, in Bonn held by ICLE and a number of partners. Uh, on the same date, there was the announcement of the uh, City of Edmonton from Canada as the host of the IPCC Cities Conference uh, to be held in March 2018, which was a, a good progress because uh, the pro uh, the, 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 this will be an important meeting in terms of its outcomes, both for the special report of IPCC in 2018 uh, on 1.5 degree goal, but also preparations for the, the, the uh, seventh assessment report and, and sixth assessment report as well. Um, on the 7th of May, here in Bonn, we had the first in-person meeting of the Global Advisor Group for our COP23 preparations, which enabled us to discuss um, our, our, with um, friends of cities and with partners and the COP presidencies, uh, especially the COP22 presidency. Uh, for two weeks uh, in Bonn, we will we had uh, interaction with the UNFCCC negotiators. We will go through them separately. But at the same time, there was the UN Habitat 26 Governing Council meeting in Nairobi, uh, which was of course important for uh, local and uh, regional governments in terms of uh, progress with the Habitat 3 agenda. 
Uh, on the same uh, 8th of May, there was an important launch. Uh, the 100% renewable energy platform was, was launched uh, through a side event in, in Bonn. Uh, and one week later, there was an important gathering in Vancouver, which uh, was focusing on renewable cities, global learning. Um, in, in Cancun, the week after, there was a, the, the, the biennial meeting of the Global Platform for Disaster Risk Reduction, which is uh, monitoring the Sendai implementation. On the same date, there was the G7 uh, Heads of State Summit uh, Leaders Communique was released from uh, Italy, and in that document, U.S. government was referred as uh, in the process of reviewing their climate policy. Uh, but one week after, there was the famous announcement from White House, which announced that Trump administration has decided to withdraw U.S. federal government from the Paris Agreement. Immediately on the same day, Michael Bloomberg, U.S. Special Envoy uh, of U.N. Secretary General on Cities and Climate Change, has announced his pledge of 18, 15 million dollars to support the work of UNFCC Secretariat. And in, in a couple of days' time, uh, more than 1,200 uh, stakeholders, including hundreds of mayors and dozens of governors in the U.S., together with business and universities, announced uh, a declaration which is called We Are Still In to show that the U.S. stakeholders are actively involved in the global efforts and they will not give up and they will continue to, to take the, the action forward. Um, uh, on, on this week uh, of the June, there was a UN Ocean Conference. It was important because the, the one of the co-hosts was, again, a Fiji government, who is also the, the COP presidency. So there was an intensive debate uh, on the Ocean Conference, around the Ocean Conference, in, in terms of relations to climate as well. And numerous consultations were held with UN officials, especially uh, UN Deputy Secretary General and other UN leaders. Um, on the 11th of June, uh, this, this time environment ministers of G7 met and they released their communique. Uh, the difference of this communique was that here um, there was a strong reference to the role of subnational and non-state actors uh, and, and the position of US was referred as a footnote which says that the US government is has put his reservations to this uh, articles in this communique regarding climate change. Uh, on the 14th and 15th of June, Marrakesh Partnership had uh, gathered with its stakeholders uh, in terms of st strategy and planning for the COP23 roadmap. Um, uh, on the same date this meeting was taking place, um, Governor Jerry Brown uh, welcomed uh, COP23 President-designate uh, Fijian Prime Minister who announced uh, Jerry Brown as a special envoy for states and region for COP23. And then uh, in similar days, there was another movement in Africa. Uh, African Capital City Sustainability Forum was held in Tishwane. And the week later, we had the R20 regions of climate uh, action had gathered for their first world summit, which was instrumental in terms of raising publicity and uh, raising political attention. The, with the participation of the former governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and president of um, Austria, as well as uh, UNFCC Executive Secretary Patricia Espinoza. And in the same date, Metropolis uh, 12th World Congress was held in Montreal, which is gathering around 150 mayors worldwide, which also proposed uh, certain commitments, and, 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 and they had a good dialogue with Minister Prime Minister of Canada, uh, Justin Trudeau also was one of the guests of honor who had uh, made a, a, an interesting and important interaction with the participants. So as you see, it was a very active uh, and ambitious two months. Uh, we believe the outcome of this uh, will certainly have impacts on the way COP in Bonn is designed. But let's have a focus on now on the uh, what has happened in uh, Bonn for two weeks because this was a technical um, uh, session where uh, it was uh, which was the mandate to prepare the COP outcomes. But let's recall this was uh, the weeks before official position of UNF, the USA, the, the federal government was announced. So there were still some ambiguities and some lack of clarity. So the, the atmosphere in, in Bonn was a bit, um, let's say, the wait and see mode. But there was a, a number of important outcomes. We'll go through that. In terms of our constituency, local governments and municipal authorities, we could clarify that we had mainly focused on four types of activities. First, we had interventions in regular UNFCC sessions. Uh, the members of the LGMA constituency have shared these tasks and 
and all the documents are available online. We have communicated our positions and selected agenda items. We also had intensive dialogues, uh, mainly closed meetings with the COP presidencies, uh, which also helped us to intervene in, in our, our, our positions to the parties as well with the leadership of the COP22 uh, and COP23 presidency. There were a number of events um, during these two weeks where there was an active contribution of local and, sub and uh, regional governments. The first one was the SPI 46 stakeholder workshop which is especially uh, planning uh, for the future engagement of the stakeholders in the implementation of Paris Agreement. Um, there was an, an intensive dialogue on mitigation and adaptation, technical expert meetings, and Paris Committee also met, uh, where we also participated with our positions on the, on the, on the agenda items, uh, as Paris Agreement also refers to subnational capacity building as a core area. Three press conferences were held um, at the beginning, uh, on the first day, ICLA, WRI, Mission 2020 and CERES. Then um, Climate Chance Association announced the convening of the, the, the Climate Chance Conference in Agadir in September with the participation of the two of the climate, high-level climate champions. And on the last day of the UNFCC uh, sessions, um, UNS Secretary, German Minister of Environment, uh, COP23 presidency and City of Bonn announced their plans for the logistical and technical details of the planning for the November summit. Uh, throughout the two weeks there were a number of side events. The most important ones from our constituency was the one held by ICLE and CDKN. Energy Forestry also had its event and uh, the global 100% renewable energy platform was launched. So um, you can you can just go through uh, a couple of uh, captures, uh, photos that captures the engagement, the active and dynamic um, act, uh, mood during the conference, uh, which gives you the idea how we interact throughout the two weeks. Um, in conclusion, what these interactions have resulted, we can highlight that first of all, the stakeholder engagement, uh, the result of the subsidiary by the workshop was um, embedded into the subsidiary by the decisions, SBI decisions. It gave a, a number of mandates to UNFCC bodies, uh, presidencies, and the secretariat. And, and the most important thing is that there was a clear recognition of the role of constituencies in terms of uh, consultations and providing input to the, the uh, especially um, uh, preparation of the climate action plans. and. Uh, the presidencies were also invited to have more active engagement with these um, constituencies. Uh, there was a clear mandate to have much more flexibility and um, visibility of the, the contributions of the stakeholders into the process. Um, and we believe this is truly reflecting the spirit of the Paris Agreement where uh, the, the role of uh, subnational and non-state actors, which are phrased as non-part stakeholders are clearly in, 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 in an indispensable element of, of the, the, the Paris Agreement. So we can now comfortably build upon all these decisions and outcomes so that we can have a much better engagement in the process. Meanwhile, uh, negotiations were also starting to open up their, their, their uh, vision and, and there were a number of parties like uh, South Korea, Mexico, Colombia, Canada, Australia, EU, who expressed very clear vision that they would like to see stakeholder engagement, in particular local and regional governments, both at home and also during the, the facilitative process in 2018, to be actively involved in the process. Um, so that, that was a good news, I, I, we believe. Um, the Marrakesh Partnership, which is the action agenda of the UNFCC process dating back to 2014, and in, in advance with Lima Pirates Action Agenda and the Marrakesh Partnership have received certain um, feedbacks from parties and stakeholders. Uh, there was a strong, uh, let's say, uh, backup for, for the vision and, and the activity plan and the, the, the latest version of this uh, action program was uh, revised and uh, released on the last day of UNFCC but it was great um, confidence and, and motivation that Marrakesh Partnership receiving such a good support from the parties and stakeholders. So in that sense, this was also an important outcome. Paris Agreement rulebook, especially on um, a number of fronts, uh, such as transparency, facilitative dialogue process, or rulebook discussions have advanced. As we have said, these are incremental steps at this stage because there were still 
concerns about how the future would look like based on the, the position of the US but despite that there were certain progress and uh, clear uh, deadlines were announced for submissions so that by the time we meet in Bonn there will be hopefully more progress on these clarities and most importantly throughout the two weeks the, the incoming presidency uh, Fijian government have shown a huge participation with their key negotiators, ambassadors, uh, high-level champions, ministers, Seniratu, and at the last day, Prime Minister Banyarama, also President-designate, um, had appeared in, in Bonn, met with stakeholders, met with parties, and the, it was a very encouraging signal that one of their biggest ambitions is to create a grand coalition of active leaders, uh, including cities and regions, as an outcome of COP23, which, which strengthens that, that uh, the momentum of climate action is not lost and, and, and this unstoppable process is advancing on the right direction. So with, with this uh, update, some clarities, we can now comfortably uh, provide feedback to you. So, so what type of a process we are now envisaging for the uh, COP23 in November, first of all in terms of organizational aspects, we have now confirmed that the, the events will be co-hosted by City of Bonn and State of North Rhine-Westphalia, which is a signal of, of multi-level governance. We will have a special partner, German uh, Minister of Collabor um, Development uh, Cooperation, will provide both financial support but also uh, ensure our, our efforts are, are also um, fed into the multi-level partnerships. Um, we will have two global initiatives as a special feature, uh, Global Covenant of Mayors for Climate Energy and Under Two Coalition will have a special um, role in, in, in scaling up all the commitments and outcomes of our summit. We will have a host committee which is mainly the German partners uh, that consists of City of Bonn, State of North Rhine-Westphalia, BMZ, German Minister of Environment, BMUB, Deutsche Stadtetag, German Association of Cities, Engagement Global, a, a partnership initiative of the German government, and ICLE, who would also serve as the secretariat of this process. And we have uh, received uh, a number of uh, feedbacks, and we will show the, the latest version, but we will have a global advisory group, which consists of all the partners and, and those who express endorsement to the process. In terms of uh, the, the debate, uh, we would have uh, we would focus on four themes. Uh, the first one will be, and the most important one, will be the multi-level governance and vertical integration of NDCs, because the outcome of COP23 in Bonn will play a huge role in the way the facilitative dialogue will be shaped, and, and our expectation is that COP23 COP will encourage um, nations, those who are ambitious nations, to have a better dialogue with their local and regional governments when they go back so that they increase their ambitions. Then we will also address holistic approaches on sustainability and climate action. We will discuss how we can scale up our engagement with community and business, and we will scale up our partnership with the Global South. In terms of our expected outcomes, we will have updates on our actions at multi-level um, and multiple fronts. We will share our good practices, and we will particularly address the issues of finance and capacity building. We will announce new initiatives and we will welcome new partnerships and projects and plans and we will also provide our key proposals to UNFCC negotiations but not limited to that the UN reform Habitat 3 uh, the SDG 11 review now which is all leading their uh, convergence in a more more systematic way of uh, global sustainability action so this uh, process will also be a part of all these uh, discussions um, Important thing, during the two weeks in May, we have now heard clarities. We will have now one conference and two zones, which means Bula Zone is the place where for negotiators will have meetings, but all the side events, all the stakeholder engagements, all the country pavilions will be held in Bonn Zone. This gives the confidence that access will be much more relaxed in terms of participation in the Bonn Zone. Uh, there will be much uh, bigger engagement opportunities. But Bula Zone will be relatively restricted, which will be mainly for those who deliver statements. A couple of um, opportunities will come up in, during the whole two weeks. But most of the action agenda and the discussions will be in the Bond Zone. And uh, here is a, a revised version of our, our vision for our COP23 agenda. As you can see, the, clearly the leadership uh, and hosting 
but also the partnership, uh, all the organizations who have announced their endorsement to this process, but also the UN agencies. And uh, here you can notice the stamp of the COP23 Fijian government, which is, as far as we are, have been informed, the first event where the COP23 presidency and endorsement is announced. So this shows the leadership of local and regional government that we have been uh, actively approaching and improving our dialogues and collaboration with the COP presidency. And this gives us the confidence that our discussions, our events will not be limited only to our networks, but it will expand to national governments, friendly nations, and to the UNFCC process in its entirety. With this, um, I think it, it's now time for us uh, to hear from Susan how, how the plans are in terms of the agenda during these two weeks. Uh, Susan, the floor is yours. Hi, Yunus. Uh, thank you. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, it's great you could all join. And as I see in the list of attendants, we even have uh, the UNFCCC with us. We have Deutsche Städtetag with us. Um, and we have some representative of the other partners. This um, summit of local and regional leaders actually is a premiere in uh, a multiple sense. It is the first time that um, the regional and subnational and local leaders are invited into the conference zone itself with their conference. It is the first time that a city and a state, so subnational level, team up to host such an event. Um, and surely it will be the summit. Um, which is characterized by ambition because I think we all got the message um, cities and region will hold up the ambition and will uh, even uh, scale it up uh, during the conference. Yunus already took you through the conference themes which will be uh, de dealt with during the 12th of November. We have already had a face-to-face -face meeting on the 7th of May with many of you present uh, here in this call. And we also had a preceding teleconference. Uh, we are currently within the host committee um, working on the program, but this of course doesn't work without your contribution. Um, many of you already expressed their interest in one or more of the topics last time, so we would really be depending on your input right now. Um, I will tell you later on what exactly we, we would hope from you to receive from you in the next few days, so it's namely also your messages, your expected outcome, uh, your challenges to be addressed. Um, so that's the leader summit. We have now shifted the venue. In the beginning, we had planned for a venue outside the conference zone, outside the bond zone um, for only 400 people. Now we were invited into the bond zone by Her Excellency, the Under Secretary General Espinoza. And we were very lucky that now we can host some more people. Uh, we are planning in the 600 now. We're planning a full day event. Um, and of course, it will be the peak of a whole program surrounding. As Yunus had explained, there will be many other events framing it. Uh, events organized by you, our network partners. Events by um, organized by the national level um, of some partners. Uh, the Marrakesh partnership will also um, give a frame to our events and in particular also to the Leader Summit uh, because we're using the huge plenary hall of the Marrakesh partnership uh, actually tribute to the uh, generosity of the UNFCCC convention and the parties. Um, throughout the whole two weeks we are also hoping to have um, a cities and regions pavilion again. Those who were in Paris in 2015 and in Marrakesh, they saw that it was really a meeting point uh, for the topics of cities and regions, for the LGMA, for parties to talk to them. Actually, Deutsche Städtetag, uh, who is represented in this call by Sabine Dres, and uh, the city of Bonn are jointly addressing 
the Ministry for the Environment, um, asking them for their support to have special conditions for a presence in the bond zone. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, offering us the opportunity to showcase and to to have panels to to have representatives of cities and regions being present in the bond zone throughout the whole two weeks um of course the lgma will continue their interventions at bula zone yunus has referred to it but this will be a rather small team by the by uh, be, uh during the um sorry it will be a small team while the bond zone team will be much much bigger and have more opportunities for interaction also because of the special structure of this zone may i switch to the next slide please Yunus? thank you um so the core activities um i already told you um a couple of sentences ago that the 12th of november will be the peak the leaders the summit the climate summit of local and regional leaders in the bond zone followed by an evening reception hosted by the state of north Rhine westphalia the minister president will be elected by then and in office it will be preceded of events on the Saturday already. Um, El Gore will be present uh, showing a special screening of the Inconvenient Sequel, the sequel to The Inconvenient Truth. There will be uh, human settlement themes in the program of the Marrakesh Partnership and the city of Bonn, Mayor Sridharan, uh, is very happy to host a reception for the participants of the summit. On 13th of November, it'll be our big outreach, because if we have strong messages, we need to convey them to the media, to the Marrakesh Partnership high-level dialogue on SDG 11, and there will be a high-level dinner as well. Jonas, please. So what are we going to do by now? At the moment, we are in preparations for a first invitation, save the date, uh, to be sent out uh, in the next days. But we are already preparing the second wave. And this is the wave of invitations where we are strongly counting on your input in terms of telling us which important mayors or governors we should invite, how this invitation should get to them. Uh, Yunus, I think you have prepared a, a process for that so that networks can decide whether they want uh, the invite to be sent out by ICLE or directly. And uh, we would be really dependent on the nominations given by our partner networks in the Global Advisory Committee of Cities and Regions, uh, so that in the end we would have a participant structure which is strongly imprinted by mayors and governors and uh, by the um, also political power of cities and regions. This process was also involved, just go back please, um, the information whether you would recommend a certain mayor or governor as speaker for one of the topics um, we would also be very grateful to have your ideas on renowned experts who could enlighten one of the um, one of the topics with their expertise and we would of course be very curious what are your plans for new initiatives what announcement would you be able to make uh, during cop 23 because all these initiatives and announcement should of course be part of the outcome paper and they should be accountable afterwards um, which is a strong uh, commitment uh, to be made we launch the initiative and we hold ourselves accountable in the next years uh, the next um, big challenge is to identify the challenges in the four topics and the desirable outcomes in each of them. Um, and this is again a question to our partner networks because each network could highlight different aspects. So we would um, 
be very grateful if you could contribute to the collection of challenges, of visions, of outcomes for the priority themes we identified together and also already submit some elements to be perhaps included in the outcome document. Perhaps there have, have been some preceding uh, commitments or declarations which should be included. Perhaps you have strong messages. So all this we are we are collecting now and I said Yunus has prepared a process for that and we would also suggest to have a next webinar end July which uh, ICLEI is kindly would kindly uh, organize then again um, and now we can proceed one page thank you okay so now we have events and deadlines and at this point I should get back to Yunus because uh, it's got certainly his terrain. Thank you very much for listening and I'm uh, very much looking forward to the discussion. Thanks, uh, Susan. So um, the next couple of months will not be less hectic. Uh, that's, I think, a good news. This shows our diversity and, in, and ambition uh, raising towards COP. So in the next couple of days of June, we will have a Brussels in Brussels the board meeting of the Global Covenant. On the same days, we will have in Strasbourg uh, Climate Change Association hosting the Desertifications Conference. Uh, at the beginning of July, we will have a, a we will participate uh, the the Pacific Partnership of uh, Fijian Government together with ICLE Oceania and Commonwealth Local Government Forum, whose Pacific office is also based in Suva. Uh, during the G20 summit in July, we may expect how the relations between the Trump administration and the rest of the world would evolve how the declaration would, would uh, be shaped uh, until the last moment. Nobody knows this, of course, uh, and there will be certain announcements during the G20 process. Um, uh, these, in, the, in this document, you see in red lights, uh, red light letters, uh, some announcements and some deadlines, especially for the UNFCC. Uh, this time it's uh, in two process or two track. Uh, so the first uh, one, the deadline is the ones for registrations for the Bula zone, which we are expecting to be much less in terms of the numbers for each organization. But towards August, uh, until August, you still have the chance to develop your list of nominations for the Bond zone, which will have much broader participation. Uh, during July, we will have the EcoCity Summit in Melbourne, um, and, and there will also be the UNFC side event applications. The Marrakesh partnership process will also be strongly coordinated with this process. Uh, in September, we will have a high-level dialogue on Habitat 3 follow-up in New York uh, with the President of the General Assembly. There will be a local renewables conference in Nagano, Japan. Um, Climate Chance will meet in Morocco, COP22 presidency. Uh, it will be an opportunity to have the state, non-state actors and subnationals to raise their voice as non-party stakeholders. Uh, on the 12th of September in Ordos, China, there will be a COP uh, of the Desertification Conference. Mayor of Bonn and, and Strasbourg are on where to confirm their participation, which will uh, have a, a, a mayor's roundtable with ministers. In the, the third week of September, there will be a long, week-long activities, traditional climate week, which shows the passion and ambition. I, I, we are expecting this year it will be even more, more, more uh, colorful and passionate and ambitious to reflect the dynamic uh, activities of the, the stakeholders in the U.S. who are committed to climate action. And throughout the October, we will have the Ecomobility Congress in Kaohsiung, but the, the Congress, sorry, Ecomobility Festival, for one month, car-free zone in, a, in an urban district in Kaohsiung, but there will be a special Congress for two days in October. There will be a special summit in Malmö for SDG 14 on focusing on oceans and the local government's contribution to oceans. Uh, there will be a pre-COP in Fiji uh, in October and, and immediately it will be followed by the OECD Mayor's Forum in Korea. And then we will conclude the preparatory phases and we will come to Bonn uh, with this marathon reaching to its peak, uh, hopefully on the 12th and then the week after in the high level segment. So with this, uh, we've come to the end of our conclusion. So I think now Jisun will help us to facilitate the Q&A and contributions from the participants either by written questions or they can raise hands and intervene verbally as well. Thank you, Yunus, and thank you, um, 
Suzanne as well for uh, both of your presentations. Um, I see uh, questions in the questions panel uh, already. Uh, Linus, the uh, another, uh, one question actually refers to the very last slide regarding all the um, list of events in the lead up to COP23. Actually, this question comes very uh, at the very last in the question pane, but since it actually picks up on where we left off, um, I would like to read this question. So um, it's from Daniela, and she would like to indicate other events to this list. And one event that she wrote will be this. Uh, preparatory events for COP23 in Bogota and La Paz with the presence of the mayor of Bonn from uh, 15 to 17th of July. So Daniela wanted to indicate that. Uh, she wanted to add that event, uh, flag that, uh, those two events to this list. And uh, we have another question from Zabine. Uh, she asks about the invitations, so let me read. Hi, will the mayor of Pittsburgh join the Leaders' Summit? Have you already invited nom nominees from Deutsche Städtetag? So, um, Yunus, uh, Suzanne, would any of you um, uh, like to address this question? Um, Sabine, um, have you sent your list to Eclay? Yes. 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 Uh, um, okay. So they they'll be in Yunus, I assume, yeah. because because Sabine has already entered her list yes. because he's part of the host committee for Deutsche Städtetag. So just, so just uh, to recap, uh, in terms of the invitations, the first set will be sent by Mayor of Bonn uh, next week, and we would like to uh, start with the members of ICLE, including Pittsburgh, of course, who attended Paris ICLE delegation. Uh, and we would also like to consult with our partners who have seen with their logos and their participation here so that uh, their priority list of uh, leaders who they wish, they wish to be attending to the COP and we will work with them so that either we will send the letters from mayor's office or ICLE's uh, presentation or uh, they can forward these letters to their members uh, with their cover letter. So we hope the second set of invitations will also reach by the latest in the mid-July. This gives us the chance that at least uh, the, the, the all, our constituency is aware of, of this event. And, and then in, uh, once we have more clarities on UNFCC, the facilities, the pavilion and, and others, I think we will be able to clarify more in terms of speaking opportunities and engagement opportunities, which will be clarified by end of August, I guess. Thank you, Yunus. And I see a raised hand by Agath. So I give Agath the floor. Agath, the floor is yours. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Thank you. Sorry, because I'm calling in from a phone. Um, well, uh, first of all, uh, as usual, thank you very much to, to the three of you for this extremely useful uh, webinar and a wealth of information that you're always able to, to share with, with us, and we greatly appreciate it. Um, I have a few questions. Um, is it all right? I'll just shoot uh, all of them at you. Some are very brief, um, and you may actually have just answered one of them. Uh, firstly, I was wondering if we already have a date for the next advisory board of the uh, Leader Summit, um, because as a partner, uh, we'd like to uh, very much support you and participate. Pardon? Um, hello, can you hear me fine? Yes, uh, uh, Susan, she was, uh, Agat was asking whether we have defined the next uh, in-person meeting of Global Advisory Group. Oh, okay, thank you. Yes. Um, then two more quick questions on the summit dialogues and the pavilion, but I think you just answered that. I was wondering, uh, with regards to the summit dialogues, if that will just be a sort of umbrella branding for all activities taking place on those dates and relevant for local leaders, or if that may also, um, if we submit ideas for the summit dialogues, if we may also maybe have facilitated access to, to space. Um, same applies to um, the season region civilian. Just wondering if you already know if there will be room for activities there, such as 
plenary room or, or smaller meeting room. Um, and finally, I was wondering if you had a little bit more insight into this year's unusual registration uh, process for the Bula and the Bon Zone. Um, mainly, I'm wondering um, if you believe that we should submit the same list of names for both zones, or um, if we should um, sort of pre-select the names that we're going to submit to the Bula zone, which I understand is going to be more restrictive. Um, I'm just wondering if the usual quota of accreditations that we can expect to get, uh, whether that's going to be just for the Bula zone or for both zones, or um, or if you're aware of, of anything else we should, we should know as we prepare those lists. Thank you very much, and sorry for the overload of questions. <laughs> Thank you, Agath, for your questions. So I guess I would like to give Yunus the floor to answer. So thanks, Agath. The first uh, question, I, I mean, we have not defined in person the date. I think we would uh, see uh, probably in one of the meetings in September, maybe we can reach to a critical mass so that we can we can announce it, but uh, we rather would like to advance with uh, webinars like that in the next couple of months until September. Um, and for sure, you would be receiving the, the next uh, dates. Um, for the dialogues, uh, true, uh, we would like to brand under this umbrella, and it could be a technical meeting, it will be an annual gathering, but as long as it serves to the purpose or the priorities of the summit, we would like to brand it as our, our summit dialogues. And in terms of venues, um, Marrakesh Partnership is also uh, working with the Secretariat staff. Um, depending on whether we will have a pavilion, some of those events can take place at the pavilion, like we did in Paris or in Marrakesh. So a bit too early, that's why uh, we would like to first of all hear from you as and we received already inputs uh, for those from those participants, but uh, we'd like to refresh ourselves based on the latest outcomes of the discussions over the last couple of days. Um, so we would like to collect the ideas in a more uh, like inspirational, uh, and then we can assess what on the way going forward. Uh, I assume by the end of July we can have more clarity on which events can take place and, and how the sequence can flow in. Regarding the registrations, uh, once again, uh, it will be it will be different than previous years. So you would expect to have more access, more quotas for bond zone. So you can have you can expect to register more people than you have ever done before. But the number of registrations to the Bula zone may be much less than you have seen before. That is, uh, let's say, a kind of a counterbalance to each other. Um, and, and I think if you can remember the process at the first stage with these deadlines, the, the first indication is the numbers, not the names. And the names can be clarified uh, until 31st of October. But by the 7th of July and by, by the uh, 25th of August, uh, in respective order, you would have to define it or you would have to expect clarities on your quotas for Bula zone first and then Bond zone. Um, I think that was addressing your points as far as I can recap. Thank you, Ines. Um, Susan, are there anything, uh, are there any issues you'd like to also add to that? I think Yunus uh, answered uh, very complete and comprehensive. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I see another comment that by Daniela. Uh, it's not a question, but she wanted to flag that and share that with uh, the members here in this uh, webinar. So let me read. Uh, I would like to share with the other colleagues uh, that ICLE South America is signing an MOU with the Brazilian Ministry of Environment to have a space for local governments in the Brazilian stand, which will allow to engage more local governments in the process. The details will be shared soon and she just wanted to share that with everyone here. Um, at the moment I don't see any other questions or hand raised. Um, participants, ladies and gentlemen, are there any questions or comments you would like to raise? We are done with all the presentations we prepared for today's webinar, so the floor is now open for any questions or comments.
<coughs> excuse me. I just would like to also welcome uh, a number of participation from California <coughs> governor's office, and which is really exciting because. California, as you have heard, a number of announcements coming coming up, uh, both as under two coalition and on the way to leadership of the U.S. Um, local and regional leaders. But uh, we didn't mention it here. But in 2018, uh, we are aware that there will be some announcements in terms of additional processes. Uh, but uh, the good news, uh, because of this good dialogue with uh, cities and regions and the networks and states. Um, we look forward to welcome the delegation from California and other other states and cities from the U.S. Um, I just wanted to point this, which is um, showing how how globally we are connected and and and, and working together to to in, in advance our work. Uh, so that was really good to see as well. And we'll provide further updates the more we get uh, information from the California governor's office. Thank you, Ines. Um, I see a hand raised by Sally. So I, I give uh, the floor now to Sally. Sally, the floor is yours. Hi. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask, thank you very much for this really interesting uh, presentation um, uh, to Eunice and uh, the other speaker. Sorry, I forgot your name. Um, but I would like to ask, when would the wider list of uh, side events be released approximately? Do you know? Hmm. Well, it is um, a bit, um, I think we have to be flexible on that uh, probably because the applications will be sent to the UNFCC by mid-July. Uh, so if you look at the calendar, um, sorry, I was too fast, um, just a moment. Um, we also have colleagues from the UNFCC Secretariat, by the way, if they want, they can also address any explanation, further information, if they haven't left already. They, I see David, uh, if you would like, you can also respond, David. Uh, but basically, if you look at the calendar, 18 to 21 is the collection of applications from the UNFCC, and, and this time I'm seeing that UNFCC Secretariat is planning to open this application process to non-accredited uh, observers or stakeholders, which is reflecting the, the spirit and the capacity of the bond zone being much more open, uh, but procedures may be differ a bit. Uh, probably there will be more announcements coming soon. Uh, usually it takes a couple of weeks, um, and I think by the end of August you can expect the first response, uh, but as you have seen, all the pavilions of the parties, also organizations, will also be in bond zone, and everybody is now have expressed their interest to reserve a commercial area, which is called pavilions. Uh, so, in addition to the UNFCC, there will be certain events uh, in the bond zone by other partners as well. Um, from our side, we would like to keep you informed as much as possible, but uh, I think the first sketch can be expected to be available by the end of August. Thank you. Thank you, Eunice, for your answers. Um, I see a hand still raised by Agath. Agath, do you have any additional questions or comments, or is this um, hand raised for your previous question? Oh, okay. Um, at the moment, I don't see any other questions either written or any other hands raised at the moment. We actually still have time, so um, Eunice or Zabina, are there any, any, any other points you would like to add as final uh, remarks? Well, from our side, um, after this ma uh, meeting, because uh, based on your responses, we have also advanced this uh, presentation. So uh, tomorrow we will receive uh, the link to the PDF version of this presentation. And the Global Advisory Group, which met uh, in on 7th of May and which was further expanded based on the feedback we received over the past couple of weeks, they will receive a special invitation uh, to express the, their their visions for this list of invitees, list of speakers, uh, as an indicative, not a too much detailed, but very basic information, that you would receive this document. It will be a simple, very simple Excel file. If you can send this to us by next week, because the host committee 
will meet on the 7th of July and in this host committee meeting we would like to provide the, the feedbacks. So all the organizations with the logos you are seeing here will receive this information and we would expect their feedbacks to us. Uh, this list of special partnerships uh, would increase further. Uh, we are in touch with a Canadian network of associations, also Latin America, especially Argentina, where Canada and Argentina will be the G20 and G7 presidency next year. Um, also the, the Polish uh, city associations and the Morocco uh, Moroccan regions. So you can expect a couple of more additions to this uh, group of, or family of partners which will help us clarify much more in details. So immediate next step is if you can fill this form and send to us uh, how you'd like us to manage the limitations, that will be the most important thing. Very likely in the third week of July, sorry, fourth week of July, you can expect another round of webinars and in between you will receive updates. Um, probably you are receiving our LGMA mailings. Uh, there will be certain updates from our side. Um, so these are all from our side as, uh, as equally and feel free to update us so that anything we're missing or anything has to be taken into account, we're, we're happy to integrate as appropriate. Um, Susan, anything you'd like to add? Uh, well, I'd, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody present uh, this afternoon and already this morning for the confidence they're having in Bonn and North Rhine-Westphalia to host this summit of local and regional leaders and um, we feel enriched by um, the mandate we now have by the networks of regions uh, and cities and of course uh, the planning for this COP will be highly um, enriched and uh, highlighted by all the input of the networks and the important mayors and governors and experts uh, you will be able to to bring to Bonn. So um, we feel very honored to be the host city and the host state um, in of this summit, of this really global summit and to also join in and this is I think why Sabine Dres is as well here the expertise of German cities to it. We're looking very much forward to learning about your initiatives and messages uh, in the process Jonas described and my last thank you goes to of course Jonas, Chizun and their team who managed and organized this webinar Thanks a lot to everybody. Thank you, Susan. I actually see a hand raised by Tobias. So Tobias, you have the floor. Now I'm on, right? Now you can hear me. I started before you um, unmuted me. Hi, how are you? Um, I'm sorry, I had to leave 10 minutes. So maybe the question I'm asking right now has already been answered. The pavilion, is it already been, um, um, is it already uh, uh, set or is it still in question? On the way to BIAS, we on have written a letter to, to BMUB for special conditions in the bond zone. Okay. Um, I think we'll find a solution, uh, it just depends which okay. solution we find. <laughs> No problem, no problem. It's uh, just a question and I was off 10 minutes so I wasn't sure whether it was uh, already answered. Yeah, it was a good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes I have good questions. My second question is, do you even sleep or eat at all? Happen to sometimes. Okay. And I'm even even drinking while we while we talk tea. <laughs> yeah, this is what I wanted to say. I mean, I'm joking, but I, I'm very serious. I mean, Iple, I think you're doing a very good job. I can just imagine how challenging this can be and how fun it is, of course. But thank you very much. I think great job so far. Thank you, Tobias. Um, Eunice, would you like to add something more for the pavilion question? Okay, so I think that question has been uh, addressed. At the moment, I don't see any other hands raised or any questions written in the uh, questions task pane. So, shall, uh, can I take it that there are no further questions or comments from the attendees today at this webinar? 
Well, I see none. So um, I would like to then wrap up. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, thank you so much for joining us at today's webinar today. And as I mentioned at the very beginning, this webinar has been recorded and it will be uh, placed on the uh, COP23 part of ICLEI's website so that you can revisit this webinar at any time. Uh, with that, I would like to thank you all and I now pronounce this webinar closed. Thank you. Thanks, Chizun.